Today's scripture is from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Please follow along on the screen as I read. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now let's see what Miss Julie has to teach all of our children about that passage. Uh, friends, join me in prayer. Will God open us up? Open our eyes that we might see and our ears that we might hear. Open our hearts that we might feel. And then, O oh Lord, open our hands that we might serve. Amen. Ann Scheiber was born in the late 19th century. And when she was a young person, she never married. When she was a young person, uh, she took, she saved her money. She didn't make very much money, $3,000 a year. And she took that and she took all of her savings and gave it to her younger brother, who was uh, beginning as a Wall Street um, broker in 1933. And uh, between 33 and 34, uh, the market was beginning to pick up after the Depression, uh, but the, the, the brokerage firm didn't do well and it went belly up and she lost all of her money. Well, that didn't stop her. 10 years later in 1945, she took her uh, the $5,000 that she had saved since she lost everything and began to invest it in the stock market. And uh, she picked her own stocks. She uh, did the research. She worked hard at it. Um, and she really became obsessed with it. It began to dominate her life, this investing. She worked so hard at it. And she would save and invest and save and invest in the market. And uh, when she died at age 101, um, just before the turn of the century, uh, she was worth $22 million. All from just smart, uh, regular, persistent investing. It uh, really is an uh, amazing story. I wish I had a little of that, you know. That's, that's not been my approach to money managing, unfortunately. Except that uh, she died estranged from her family. She gave $50,000 to a, a nephew, I believe, that she believed in, but gave the, all of the rest of it to Yeshiva University, uh, leaving nothing to her family because of their estrangement. So I just wonder, is, is that the result that I want of my life? Is that the kind of investing that I want to do? Is, um, is focus on... Uh, getting those dollar numbers up instead of caring about the people around me. You know, every Sunday, um, I, I will stand in the congregation and look out at the people when we're in person. When we're uh, doing it virtually, all I can do is sort of imagine. But I think about just, you know, what, what brought them to the place and what are the burdens they're carrying and what are the uh, the griefs that they bear, what are the sins they've committed and uh, are denying, and what are the sins that they recognize and are repenting of, and uh, just I try and imagine just all of the baggage that everybody carries in. But then beyond that, I, I begin to imagine what would happen if a word from God, just just some word from Scripture uh, that, it, that I can maybe possibly unpack today, Will, will seep into a, a, a little crevice, a crack in their defenses, in each person's defenses. And that if, if, they, if the Holy Spirit could come and just set those people free and, and take hold of the gifts that are within them and just take off, just think if we could unleash the potential that lives in each and every one of you. What, what would that be like? Uh, that's the kind of investing that I want us to think about today. Uh, let me tell you the story uh, a little bit about Timothy. So Paul went on his first missionary journey, and it was uh, his shortest missionary journey, only through the eastern part of what is now Turkey. 
And uh, he went to a little town called Lystra. While he was there, he healed a crippled man. And the people around thought he was a god. And he kept saying, no, we're not gods, we're not gods. Well, some of the, of the uh, uh, Jewish authorities came from another town. He was taken out to the edge of town. They were beaten and left for dead. And Paul and, uh, moved on on that first missionary journey. But there was a, there was a, a boy there, a, a very, we think probably preteen even, that witnessed that. And he saw the, the experience of, of what, who Paul was and what Paul did, and he became a follower of Jesus, as did his mother and as did his grandmother. Well, some years later, Paul came back to Lystra on his second missionary journey. And when he was there, he met Timothy. And he uh, uh, took Timothy under his wing, and Timothy began to travel with him. And Timothy, what, what we know about Timothy from Scripture is that it seems that he was anxious or timid in some way, um, so he, that he was a soft-spoken uh, young person. It seems that he may have had some health problems because uh, Paul speaks about his frequent ailments. But uh, Timothy began to travel with Paul, and Paul just invested in him, just poured himself into him. And uh, it turns out that Timothy then became the co-author of six of the, of the letters, the epistles in um, Scripture, um, and that, that then Timothy left, uh, Paul left Timothy to be the pastor in Ephesus, the second largest city in the Roman Empire. And, uh, and it is to him in Ephesus that this letter, uh, both letters of First and Second Timothy are written. So what I'd like for us to do is to think a little bit and just uh, look at this, these two verses of Scripture and see if we can learn a little bit about what it takes to, to bring about this kind of return on investment, this kind of transformation that happened in Timothy's life. Uh, particularly as a young person. There are three things I hope that you'll see in this. Um, here's the first, this, these are the three things it takes to bring about that kind of ROI. The first one is it takes a gift of God. That's what the scripture says. Listen, he says, um, the gift of God that is within you, right? Each one of us has a gift of God. We were all created as gifted. I personally, I have the gift of being a marvelous singer. I mean, I probably should be in Broadway shows um, and, you know, singing and, and hearing the applause of thousands as I uh, sing beautifully. And I have that within me. But when I was a child, um, I went to a children's uh, choir and the, uh, the choir leader um, said that I should sing softly because I was throwing everybody else off. And I think she really wanted me to mouth the words but didn't have the nerve to say that. So um, I've not developed that beautiful voice that I have. And uh, so apparently that is no longer my gift. I'm a terrible singer, but I sing loudly so that those around me often kind of glance sideways like, what is the matter with him? Uh, so that's not my gift, but everybody does have some gift. I, I like to imagine God creating each of us, uh, sort of forming us out of, the, of the, uh, the dirt of the ground. And as God forms us, decides, what gift am I going to put in here? Right? It's like a, uh, it, it, like a Build-A-Bear workshop where, you know, God's created this and then slides into the heart this uh, this, this particular gift of helping or this particular gift of administration or of leadership, and that each of us is given that, uh, uh, these gifts, these talents that are there uh, latent inside of us. I think that's why it is, it is like, you know, one of the easiest things to do is to get people to give toys for children uh, uh, to open at Christmas. So, you know, we'll have toy drives, the TV uh, um, stations do it and the fire stations do it and everybody can uh, everybody loves to bring toys for children because they don't they, the idea is they don't think there should ever be a time when any child uh, wakes up on Christmas morning and has no gift because we realize that that a child is this is this bundle of potential right 
And, and I just, uh, in 2004, uh, Oprah Winfrey invited 13 teachers that were in her audience to come up on, on her stage. And you know how Oprah Winfrey does these things. And she said, you know, you all are all teachers. I love teachers and we want to reward teachers. And one of the things you've said that you really want is a car. And so each of you is getting a new car and they bring a car out on stage and, the, and they're all crying and happy that they're getting a new car. And then she turns to the audience and she says, and you know, I have one more car to give away, one more car and somebody out here in the audience is gonna get that car. And so all these people come in and all the, the ushers come in and they're carrying little uh, boxes, little uh, like Christmas boxes, and everybody gets one and, and she says, don't shake it, don't open it, don't shake it, don't open it. But in one of those boxes, there is a key to a brand new car. And if you were the one that has the key to the brand new car, uh, that's, for, that's for you. Now you may open your boxes and everybody opens the boxes and in every single box there's a key and everybody gets a car and you know the famous uh, Oprah Winfrey, you get a car and you get a car and you get a car and you get a car. Uh, it is, uh, I, I just imagine God looking at every one of us and saying, and you get a gift 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 and it doesn't pass up anybody. Certainly more gifted than a car would be, right? We are all been, these gifts are put inside us, this potential. So the first thing it takes is that gift of God. The second thing, though, I want you to see, and it's really at the heart of our message today. He says, uh, to rekindle the gift of God through the laying on of my hands. Right, the idea is that he, he, the, the, the gift was within what uh, was within Timothy, but as Paul laid hands on him, that gift then is brought into flame, is brought uh, alive. Uh, that latent gift is brought into fruition, and that that's what the Holy Spirit does through the laying on, uh, the laying on of hands. Uh, look, the, the picture is it takes not just what God does, but it takes others, a community of people who care, who are going to love on you and invest in you that will bring that gift into, into truth, that will make it happen. One of my favorite Bible stories is the conversion of Paul in the book of Acts, conversion of Saul at first. And Saul's walking along, he's been persecuting the church, he's on the road to Damascus, a blinding light, he's not able to see, here's a voice, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Uh, um, and, and so uh, they take him into the city, into a house on the street called Straight, and God speaks to Ananias, a disciple. And he said, Ananias, I want you to go and take care of Paul, Saul. And Ananias says, no, I'm not going to do that. He's been, he's been persecuting Christians. Why would I do that? He said, I want you to go and take care of him. And so Saul go, uh, Ananias goes and lays hands on, on Saul, cares for him, nurtures him. Uh, 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 and, and Saul's eyes are opened. And then he immediately begins to share the gospel. What I think is so powerful is that it took both this, this, this action of God in Paul's life and this other disciple who came to, to take care of him, to nurture him, to, to bring that gift out in him. Uh, that's what we long to do. I want to tell you just a minute about our PX project. PX is, um, means person extraordinaire. And uh, what it does is it's a workforce development program based on a model out of New Orleans called Liberty's Kitchen. You ought to go look at their website and see the amazing work they do. PX Project, then we're working with a cohort of students um, in to, to, bring, to teach them workforce skills in a culinary setting. So um, they, we have an uh, executive chef, Adam Garcia, has done great work with them. And the idea is that we we bring out their gifts, um, help them know uh, just what they can do and to believe in them uh, and, and to, to um, allow them to reach their full potential. Uh, Meredith Davis is uh, the director of outreach here at St. Luke's and has been uh, the key player, um, plus Adam Garcia, our chef, in bringing uh, 
PX project into a reality. I want you to listen uh, to her uh, talk about it for just a minute. Her name was Miss Darrow. And to this day, I'm convinced she could see dread written all over my face every day for a year. She taught seventh grade math, and it was my nightmare. <laughs> no matter how hard I tried, I didn't understand. I felt exposed and stupid until I didn't. She was kind and warm. She would keep me after class, sit right next to me, and in the most calm and soothing voice, start from the beginning. It wasn't until I became a teacher myself that I understood her deep desire to help. But in the moment, I knew nothing about that. All I knew was that this adult that had a million other people and things to care for somehow cared about me. In PX Project, we set both long-term and short-term goals with our students. Two of our fellows had a dream of trying out for a semi-pro soccer team. We found a tryout opportunity and made plans for months. They set aside some of their money, trained for weeks, and the weekend that they'd been dreaming about finally came. On day two of the three-day tryout, one of our students said from the back seat of the car, this is like a dream. I can't believe y'all stayed to watch this whole time. I knew the weekend would be special, but I never even considered that us simply watching them play would be part of the impact. We saw to it that they were fed, housed, clothed, and ready to show their talent. And while they were so grateful for everything, the thing they talked about most was us being in the stands. They didn't make a team that weekend. We knew that was likely, and we had talked through every scenario in hopes of preparing for whatever was to happen. But that punch in the gut disappointment is something for which you can never fully prepare. And watching their faces fall was heartbreaking. I knew they felt ashamed, like they'd let us down. The truth was, we couldn't be prouder. They showed up in every way. Not only did they play hard, they were kind to their teammates, thanked the coaches that watched them, and gave it everything they had. Over the next few weeks, we talked about the experience that that weekend provided, the things they learned, the people they met. You could physically see their light come back. They were proud of themselves. We didn't do that for them. They simply needed people to help them remember all of the little things that shame so easily allows us to forget. We reminded them of their gifts, the talents that they may have forgotten. I wasn't a stupid kid, and while math would never be my favorite, Miss Darrow allowed me to see past the things that were blocking my view. She set aside everything else to sit by me. Turns out that simply pulling up a chair can be the most impactful investment. I think that's just amazing uh, to, to see uh, that happen. You know, um, I grew up in a family where I was always taught that I had potential. But it really wasn't until I became a part of the church when I was a, a teen that there was a group of people, a community of people who cared, who brought out those gifts in me, um, who allowed me to put behind my shame and put behind my fear and uh, uh, to become what I believe God intended me to become, to bring out all of that potential. Uh, that's what, uh, to, to help me see myself as a person extraordinaire, as PX Project stands for. It takes, it takes a community of caring, a gift of God that then is brought into flame, rekindled by the laying on of hands of others of a community of caring people. Then there's a third component. He says, um, for God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power, right? That's, the, that's God, what God does in us, this, the Holy Spirit power of love, a community of love that brings that out, and of self-discipline. The third component is a, a, a culture of accountability, a culture of personal accountability. You see, at some point, everybody's got to make a decision with our, with our students, with our, um, our uh, youth ministry, um, with uh, Revision, with PX Project, with everything that we do, we recognize that we can do a lot of things, but each person has to make a decision themselves the challenge, of course, is that that doesn't come always so naturally to us. There, there's a man named Charlie Johnson who is, um, he, he was a teenager 
and was troubled as a teenager. And um, he, one day his mom asked him, what do you think your future is going to be? And his, he said to his mom, I, I'm going to be a failure. And his mom finally took, uh, after much um, research, sent him to a rehabilitate a wild uh, a, a, um, a rehabil a rehabilitation program in the wilderness. I was looking for wildlife, a wilderness rehabilitation program, and uh, it was there that he was in this community of people. And at the, at the beginning of each day, they would say to one another, with the leader, "What do you want to work on today?" And it might be forgiveness. It might be some more compassion. Um, it might be um, a motivation. You know, there are different things that they were going to work on. And at the end of the day, they would ask one another, well, how did you do on that? And he said, you know, you'd get the answers that you'd expect from a group of troubled teenagers. They didn't do it. They fell short. He said, but it didn't stop there. They just kept on this daily regimen of how did you do today? How did you do today? And that built this system, this, this culture of accountability into, th into the work that they were doing. And he went on to say that when I left there, I realized that I didn't have a, a group of people anymore who were going to call me to that, so I'm going to have to do it myself. And in fact, his, his whole uh, emphasis is something he calls check yourself. You got to keep checking yourself over and over again and see if I'm, I'm taking the steps I need to be taking. A, a sense of, of personal accountability to which we're all called. I love what um, our student ministry uh, did this last weekend as their kickoff to the Transformed campaign. They had a talent show, big talent show, uh, out on our Blanton Field. It was so much uh, fun. There's lots of people there. And at the end, uh, the students who had signed up, each of them received an envelope. And in the envelope was money. I said, we're giving away money? Uh, he said, yeah, we're giving away money. Rob Dulaney, our director of youth ministry. And uh, some kids got $50, some kids got $20, some kids got $10. And the deal was, here, you're going to take this and do what you can with it. Have a bake sale. Um, you can bury it if you want to. They read the, the parable of the talents where one guy buried his treasure. Uh, but Or you can do something with it. You, you might lose it. But... Uh, give it a whirl. His, there's no question that they're going to do something with it. There's just that culture of accountability that's set there. Guys, um, this picture of how we bring transformation is at the core of, of everything we do. It's at the core of our, of our student ministry program, to, to have a culture of caring, uh, to bring, to, un, to help young people unwrap the gifts. It's in our St. Luke's Day School. It's in uh, uh, our Kids Hope Mentoring Program. It's in Revision, the, the uh, uh, program that works with at-risk uh, young people. It's in PX Project, our Workforce Development Program. It's in our student ministry. Everything that we do is built on this idea that these are gifted young people. And what we want to do is help them unfold those gifts and and fan them into flame. And when we take that time to make that investment, oh man, uh, the return on, on investment is for, for the kingdom of God is immeasurable. Pray with me. God, all around us, there are people that you have gifted, that when you created them, you, you put in them uh, these, this giftedness. And we recognize that sometimes that giftedness lies latent. So uh, help us to, to wrap ourselves around with a community of caring, to lay our hands on, on, uh, on one another, on the young people in our midst especially that it would fan into flame that gift that has been put within them, that they would then grow in power and love and self-discipline. We pray all in the name of Christ. Amen.